Okay, we're back here live in San Francisco, California. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, and Wikibon's flagship program. John Furrier, Dave Vellante, Max Gerson, CEO of MongoDB, formerly called TenGen, which powered MongoDB, now officially the new name change. Max, welcome back to theCUBE. Great to see you again. Great um, to see you again. Thanks we see you on theCUBE all the time on our reruns. Uh, when your interviews in New York were, uh, were fantastic. Great event. Um, Thanks. You're a tech athlete. The company's exploding. Unstructured data. <laughs> not being stored in Oracle databases. Um, other data sources are out there, powered by you guys. Um, first of all, tell us kind of personally where you're at emotionally right now. Market's exploding, even more crazier now, it seems, than uh, when we interviewed you last time at Oracle Open World, two years ago. I mean, um, yeah, we're, we're having a lot of fun. I think that I've been in the database business for 20 years now, and it's mostly been kind of boring. Right, not, not a lot has changed <laughs> in the database industry for 20 years, but I, I liked it and I just kept doing it. And I think, I think that customers are really ready for something new now, uh, and it's exciting for, for us to, to be able to help enable our, our users to, to be more agile, to scale out more efficiently in, in cloud-style architectures. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, but, but we're uh, really excited by, by the momentum, we're really excited uh, by, by the growth and by the receptiveness of the market to new technologies. So talk about the name change. I mean, you know, I love it, but, but what, what prompted it and, and why? Share yeah, that with it, us. It's just simpler, right? We had too many conversations that were, you know, hi, I'm Max from TenGen, and they said, what's TenGen? <laughs> we're, we're the MongoDB oh, company. Oh, yeah, Mongo. yeah, I know what that is, right? <laughs> so, so we thought, well, why are we having these conversations? It's I am, not really I'm, I am Max, I am MongoDB. <laughs> <laughs> that goes much better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so what's what, so last time we saw you in New York, uh, Jeff Kelly and I were down there interviewing. Ch give us an update. What's what's new? You know, since we talked to you in uh, I guess it was May June time frame. Yeah, the enterprise momentum ha has been really strong. I think in New York, we saw a lot of bigger organizations, MetLife, Goldman Sachs, Telefonica, uh, out there talking about how they were using MongoDB and the impact it was having on their business. MetLife had been trying for years to get to a 360 degree view of their customer, they did with, with MongoDB. And so as those stories have gotten out there, enterprise adoption is accelerating because more and more companies are saying, how can we do this? So, so those proof points in the enterprise have been great. Uh, a lot of momentum and also a lot of work as we move into more enterprises to build uh, more features around security, around management, around monitoring. We recently launched a backup service. So th those types of product maturity features that, that we really need to add uh, as we grow in a market that's been dominated by somebody over, over you know, 30 years of product maturity. Max, one of the things I want to get your opinion on, so you've, you've been database for years, one of the things that's been the most explosive trend that David and I have talked to is both commoditizing and innovative is Amazon's cloud, right? Absolutely. Amazon has enabled massive innovation at the same time as commoditized because and forced the big guys to get into the cloud era, Absolutely. and you're seeing that now five, six years later, Oracle and these guys, are the big guys are now having to deal with the cloud. Now uh, you guys really grew onto that. What is, what is the big, um, uh, scale point on Amazon. Also you have outages concerns. Uh, people want to know how do I avoid saving my clusters on Mongo and how do I balance the bare metal hosting and when I grow to a certain point and keep the cloud innovation going on. Because now people are getting to the point now where hey I'm blowing it out on Amazon kicking butt. Now I got to say okay, more scaling, a little bit different architecture. Can you talk about those two things? Cluster support on Amazon, stability around outages and then also the balancing of moving to bare metal on-prem. Sure, sure, so I think, um, uh, so first of all, we, we think that the movement to cloud-style architectures, whether they're at Amazon or on-prem, is, is an important trend that's here to stay. And whether, whether in fact those machines are virtualized or whether, whether it's just leveraging 100 inexpensive commodity servers ra rather than a, a big scale-up style server is absolutely a trend that's here to stay. I think customers are excited about it. Might not be as good for the hardware vendors, but it's good for, for the rest of the industry and certainly for, for the customers. You know, we grew up in, in that era, so in the early days, people certainly had some growing pains in, in the cloud. Uh, things, you know, the I.O. performance that you'd get uh, from EBS, for example, would not be predictable. 
Uh, we, we've had actually a good collaboration with Amazon in, in working through those issues with them, making sure that they understand what causes pain to our users uh, in their environment, and they've been very responsive around addressing those things. So now with, with the provisioned IOPS, with, with the ability to, to make sure that uh, you know, when they're going to bounce a machine, when you request a new instance, it's not going to be bounced on the same schedule. With, with a little bit of work, you, you can run very high performance, uh, uh, high performance, high availability uh, clusters now in, in Amazon. We have a lot of customers doing that successfully. I think for some, the decision to bring that in-house is really an economic decision uh, on whether they can manage the hosting uh, less expensively th than Amazon come, and in some cases for, for certain sectors, a, a security issue as well. What about the uh, conversation around big data where the, you know, it's always been all volume, big data is well, and then, yeah, machine, machine data is fast data, mm -hmm. but there's been a conversation on the, on the, on, in the community around, it's not about the volume, but, but variety. Absolutely. Talk about that dynamic, and, and really what does that mean, and how does that affect uh, some of the decisions around uh, how, what people decide to use for their data store, or, their, or which tool to use? Uh, a absolutely, I think the types of applications people are building today are very different than the applications people were building 20, 30, 40 years ago when, when the relational database was coming onto the scene. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of, of the applications, you know, accounts payable, accounts receivable, that use very regular tabular data uh, have become very, very more mature now. And as people search for competitive advantage, one of the sources of that competitive advantage is bringing more data into their applications, into their decision-making processes. So imagine someone, a stock analyst, 30, 40 years ago, they, they may have just cared about what's the P.E. ratio, what's the dividend yield, what's the market cap of the stock, stuff that fits simply in one spreadsheet. N nowadays, <laughs> you see analyst reports where they're looking at the company's website for how many job postings they have. The, scraping the, LinkedIn. The scraping, uh, yeah, yeah they're, they're going out <laughs> talking to their channel about demand. <laughs> they're bringing back a much richer set of data with which to do the analysis. And, and it's not a static set of data. They're constantly seeking to innovate and to bring new data in, into their process. And the relational database isn't well suited for, for that process. So that's, that's what's exciting, I think, for our users and, and for us. And, and talk about the, your relationship with the developer community. When we, when we were at MongoDB days, we started a collector in our little CrowdSpots tool. We got, we're tracking 7,700 people. I get comments like this. It gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling in my heart to see Rails and MongoDB holding hands and walking off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. You see some of the, the topics that are trending in our community. It's, it's Rails, it's Python, it's Node.js, it's PHP, it's, it's JavaScript. DevOps, it's the DevOps developer yeah. community, really, what's happening. Talk about your relationship with that community. Uh, we think that community is really important. We think that the world is moving towards polyglot development, it's moving towards mm. DevOps, it's moving towards more decisions happening at, at the developer level, it's, it's, it's moving more towards agility and to open source, and these are, I think, synergistic trends. So we think that that's a really, really important constituency, not just for us, but for the IT industry go, going forward. And we've made a big investment uh, in, in the product, certainly, it, for example, in, in the developer experience team, we build drivers not, not just for Java and .NET, but for Ruby and Python and PHP and Scala and about a dozen different drivers, uh, Node.js, et cetera. So, so we build about a dozen, and then the community has also contributed another 20-odd drivers. So, so, uh, so we feel like there's really good support for, for a bunch of different audiences. It's not just about getting it right for one, it's, it's about uh, appealing uh, to, to those different communities to let, it, let people seamlessly move from language to language, to have something which balances being idiomatic but, but also being reasonably standard across. So it's a big engineering investment for, for us and, and then we also invest a lot in just getting out there with the community, having our Mongo days around the world, getting to user groups, uh, staying in touch with, with the community, making sure they understand what's new in MongoDB, where we're going, making sure we understand what they want, what they like, and what they don't like from, from what we've built so far. So, a, cu a couple other pieces of, of uh, developments, anyway, since we last talked. You've announced MongoDB World in, in mm -hmm. June, right? Where are you having that? 
in New York. All right, okay, so you decided to stay in New York, great move, because your customers, you know, they had you know, a really good critical mass in New York, you know, when On we the saw date you there. On the date set for that? Yeah, it's uh, June, I forget what the actual date is, but sometime in June, the dates yeah. are firm, right? June 2014? That yeah. sounds about right. And, and then uh, the Pentaho deal mm -hmm. that you guys did, uh, open source data integration and BI, talk about what that's all about. Sure, we, we've been working with Pentaho. There's a lot of momentum around their, their tools and they've been building some really good native integration to, to MongoDB so that people can use their analytic tools uh, on top of MongoDB and the reception in, uh, with a lot of customers, certainly in banking and in other industries has been really, really positive. And I think that's important for us to, to have a strong tool set that, that works with MongoDB. We've been really pleased with, with the relationship with Pentaho, both at an engineering level and working jointly to solve problems for customers. And then you also, oh, oh, I think you told us this, or somebody told us this uh, back when we were at MongoDB days, that you were going to open an India office. You opened that office. What's that all about? You know, why India, where in India? What's the role there? Sure, we, we've been expanding around the world. We, we're open an office in India, we've opened an office in uh, Singapore, we have an office in Australia, we're, uh, we're doing more in Japan, so a lot going on in Asia. Europe has been a little more established for us, but we have an, a, a fairly large office in London. Our Europe, international headquarters is in uh, Dublin. Uh, we have an office in Germany, an office in Italy, an office in Spain, uh, uh, Scandinavian offices Nation building. as well. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm signing up in national. languages that I, I can't <laughs> read to save my life, but the lawyers tell me they're okay to sign. <laughs> and, uh, uh, the, the demand is there all, all around the world. So we've also been building the, you know, the language skills on the team, building the 24-7 follow the sun uh, support model. It, it's been a uh, time of a lot of growth. A lot so of build out. But what's what's yeah. headcount now? Uh, a little over 300. Wow, awesome. still growing. Yeah. I know you're on a tight deadline and you had a huge international success. Congratulations, I think the demand you. for you know, new types of variety of data, obviously the unstructured, you know, what you guys have done, hit the, hit the nerve, great community, massive growth, a lot of contribution, a lot of open source, a lot of cloud support, a lot of mobile, the, the perfect storm for you guys. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, final question, sure. or final comment I'll give you to end the segment is, share with the folks out there that are watching Oracle Open World, they might not be in the trenches for the open source community, that might not know Mongo, Share with them um, what they need to know about Mongo. What is it all about? Why are you guys so hot right now? And just, you know, someone that might be sitting in a big company, I've heard of Mongo. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so explain to why they, what they need to know about you guys. Sure, we designed MongoDB to, to solve two challenges with the relational database. We, we designed it to make it very easy to, to scale horizontally in cloud-style architectures, and we designed it to be very agile and productive for, for developers. And, uh, uh, developers seem to really like it, and uh, a lot of momentum. But and a lot, of, lot of a lot of applications. So for developers, it's for rapid development, great scale. Yep. MongoDB World, June 23rd to 25th at the Sheridan Times Square. Um, that's what's going on for you Thank guys. Yeah, I should have remembered the dates. Yeah, See I just got an instant <laughs> message on my little. I guess this is my teleprompter, my Mac. But uh, this is the Cube. John Furrier, David Lotte, Max Shears, the CEO of MongoDB, uh, one of the fastest growing open source projects, just exploding in value, a lot of developer success. Uh, congratulations, been following you guys for quite some time, I'm really happy to see it, congratulations. We'll be right back with more coverage live from San Francisco after this short break. <laughs>